You've just driven hundreds of miles to get here, but is Valdez really worth it? It is often overlooked when people are planning their trip to Alaska because it is off the beaten path, but we're here to tell you it's definitely worth it and maybe should even be one of your first stops here. Absolutely. I mean, from the food to the wildlife to the glaciers to the comedy, Valdez really has it going on. Welcome to the New States Go North. We're Howard and Caitlin New State, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three years, traveling through North America and beyond. This summer, we're sharing an incredible adventure with you as we return to the 49th state, Alaska. We just wrapped up an entire month of exploring the Kenai Peninsula from Homer to Whittier, and today we're heading east to show you why Valdez should be a must visit spot during your Alaskan adventures. Before we dive into why we love Valdez so much, let's start here, because the adventure really begins during the drive south on the Richardson Highway. You'll pass beautiful mountains, get incredible views of Worthington Glacier, and climb over Thompson Pass, known as the snowiest place in Alaska during the winter months. As you make your way back down the Chugach Mountain Range, you'll drive through Keystone Canyon with gorgeous waterfalls and rivers. In our opinion, the scenic drive into Valdez is one of the best in Alaska and makes the trip alone worth it. And that's before we've even gotten any of the fun stuff you can do here. This might be one of the most beautiful, what, 320 degree views I think we've ever had out of the RV. Look at the view out the front. Look at the view out the side. Look at the view out this way. <laughs> Gorgeous. All right, let's head it to downtown Valdez. License and registration. <laughs> Come here, Scout. The excitement is real from a certain dog. Welcome to Valdez, Scout. Just as pretty as I remember it. Wow, ready. More teal water, Scout. A quick stroll through the waterfront is a good way to get a lay of the land here in Valdez. You'll find cute shops, restaurants, art galleries, and fishing charters returning with their bounty. Similar to other coastal towns in Alaska, the harbor area is bustling with activity. That's also where you'll find one of our all-time favorite restaurants, the Potato. Known for, well, their potatoes, french fried with tons of garlic and rosemary. It's a must-eat spot. We have a pulled pork sandwich. Oh, yeah. With the garlic and rosemary fries. We have a salmon salad over fries. And then some ketchup, all for me. <laughs> no. Scout, can you believe that? I'm just licking her lip. Oh my god, I can smell the garlic. <laughs> look, look, look at this. Wow. Beautiful fries. Look at all that salmon. Oh my god. Wow. Give us a little dog a treat. Go. You stay? Good girl. Got it? Kind of big. We're at the Solomon Gulch Fish Hatchery, and we've been told this is the best time of the year to come and see fish. <laughs> there are millions of salmon that return to this spot every year. The water is just black, and I think that is all the fish, which is just mind-boggling that there's that many of them. I think it's amazing. I have never seen as many fish anywhere in my life. It is exactly as described. It is like a cacophony of fish. We also picked the perfect day to come and do this. This is one of the nicest days that we've had weather-wise since we've been in Alaska. Beautiful blue sky. There is not a cloud in the sky. It's probably about 70 degrees. We're wearing short perfect. sleeve shirts. Yes. <laughs> I was so excited to have an episode that didn't make Alaska look all cold and dreary <laughs> because it's not. The fish ladder is amazing. So the weir is there, so that way it directs all of the fish into the ladder. And the ladder are like a series of these like pools or chambers, and they swim and jump their way all the way up back to the hatchery. Okay, and after the 29 pools, this leads to the outdoor raceway. And you can see there are a couple of fish in here. These are the ones that have made it all the way up here, and then they're collected in these long raceways before making it inside of the hatchery. 
So it really is survival of the fittest. Only the toughest, strongest salmon that can make it up that ladder and get here to the raceway can then make it into the hatchery. And the rest will either die off and their bodies kind of return the nutrients back to the environment or they'll spawn naturally and then die in the water here. And I'm really hoping that we can find some sea lions or otters out here having a little snack. This is like the prime spot to find them. The salmon that are here right now have traveled over 1,500 miles round trip from this location. That's absolutely amazing. They travel all the way down to Washington and Oregon before curving counterclockwise all the way back up here to return to this spot. Internal GPS. It's wild. Wow, look at them. What are they look, doing? They oh my God. cow they swim in i guess schools <laughs> all together like that wow oh my god they're so big <laughs> i'm just absolutely in shock my day weekend whole week was totally just made we're standing there talking about how much we wanted to see sea lions or otters chowing down and here come these three massive sea lions and they're just going to town just pulling out fish left and right like having a smorgasbord that was so incredible to see i just can't stop smiling and to see the sea lions out in the wild after seeing one at the sea life center they're just so big it's incredible We got a little dressed up this evening because we're doing something very special. We're going to the theater. <laughs> this is actually, in my opinion, my favorite thing from Valdez when we were here in 2019. The town of Valdez has a one of a kind vaudeville show about the history of Valdez and it's hilarious and we loved it and it was so much fun. Now it is part of a dinner theater. It wasn't oh, yeah. like that in 2019. They did have like snacks that you could purchase and things like that. But now it's an entire culinary experience. <laughs> so with the four course dinner, you have the option of adding on a wine pairing. So we are enjoying some bubbly here, which will pair well with course number one. There you go, my love. Cheers. Cheers. The outdoor theater originally started as a little coffee shop run out of a vintage trailer, but even since we visited in 2019, Magpies on the Fly has more than doubled in size, adding a vintage horse trailer as their bar and reconfiguring their stage area. Three businesses, Magpies, Serendipity Supper Club, and the Far North Follies have come together to bring Valdez a whole lot of talent and deliciousness wrapped into one fantastic dinner theater. I'm going to Alaska, the last frontier. There are tales of gold, so much gold in a land practically untouched. Oh God, that's not down by Florida, is it? Oh. Is it overrun with bugs? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Does it just dangle out there in front of God and everybody? It's not like Florida. The show follows the hilarious efforts of a young prospector and his, let's call her, entrepreneur girlfriend. If they was buying supplies and such, and you weren't selling supplies, well, what was it you were selling? Such. <laughs> As he makes his way to a little town called Valdez. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sure you mean Valdez. <laughs> no, sir, it's Valdez. It's a strategic mispronunciation. And you don't need to be a local to get in on the fun and appreciate the town humor. That's Valdez plays Friday and Saturday nights in the summer months. Be sure to check out the link in the description for their schedule. You might be here forever <laughs> because of love or weather. <laughs> Either is likely. <laughs> For that, the D. Of course, it's not all jokes and laughs when it comes to the history of Valdez, and we recommend a visit to the Valdez Museum for a more in-depth understanding of the events that shaped this coastal town. Two museums in Valdez. We have one on Egan Street and then one over here on Hazlett. 
museum on Egan Street is much more polished, uh, exhibit friendly. We have a lot of our more shiny artifacts on display over there. Here, I like to think of this as like a, a more authentic, rustic Alaskan museum. <laughs> situated in a warehouse. And so the main exhibit on display here at the Remembering Old Valdez exhibit is this giant model. Valdez is one of the only towns in the world to be completely relocated. The original town site is about four miles from the current one, and that's because Valdez was partially destroyed and later entirely condemned after the Good Friday earthquake of 1964. A 9.2 quake, it was the largest to ever hit North America, wreaking havoc across major areas of Alaska. When the earthquake hit, it liquidated a large portion of the shoreline, and that actually just sloughed off into the port, causing a tsunami wave that went to the other side of the port and then came back, and on its return back is when the, the vast majority of the flooding occurred in Valdez. But there's another bay that's kind of, if this was the whole port, there's another bay over here, and that's where they've found high water marks of like 200 feet. 200 feet? Yeah, from this from tsunami, from this tsunami. And so that side got the really, really bad high water tsunami, and it's when it came back that they were fortunate enough and dodged a bullet and didn't get a 200 foot tsunami, because that would have probably annihilated every structure that was there. And well, and everyone. 31 people in Valdez lost their lives that day, mostly children who were on the dock when it struck. Another 100 people died across Alaska, Oregon, and California. In addition to the extensive exhibit and artifacts from the 1964 earthquake, there's also a large display on another infamous day. The wreck and subsequent oil spill of the namesake Exxon Valdez, which occurred in nearby Prince William Sound. This exhibit can be found in the Egan Street Museum. Combined with the other stories to be told of the history of Valdez, the museums are a must visit when exploring the area. Well, it really pays to always check and do your research before you come. Valdez was offering, although unfortunately not anymore, $50 vouchers that are good at a number of different restaurants, activities, and excursions. And all you had to do was just sign up and it was a limit of one per person. So Caitlin and I could both get one. And you know us, we used ours to try out a bunch of different restaurants in town. Oh man, the mountains call my number one. This is more like it. <laughs> Yeah, you can hike this or you can drive. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hike some, don't worry. Okay, we drove as far as we could. I hear the waterfall. We're gonna go check it out. <laughs> Scout's like, what's the problem? I'm my foot wet. Huh? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> we would have been so much drier if we had just gone down there. We could have just like walked across those rocks and we've been here. Oh wow. It's beautiful. Go, Scout, go. She's so happy, look at her smiling. So we're on the Mineral Creek Trail, and there are many different ways to get to this trail. And as you saw, you can drive part of it. It's a 14.4 mile out and back. I think that's if you start it at the very beginning. It is on all trails, and it is dog friendly. <laughs> He's so happy. He's so happy. You hear that? Water. It's really cool as you're walking <laughs> through with the mountains on all sides of you. You just hear like waterfalls and the creek down below, rushing water everywhere. It's very peaceful. Cheers. Yeah. It's our little reward. We are about to do something legendary here in Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> the Stan Stevens Cruises are in fact legendary and they are now operated by the next generation, which is really cool. And we're gonna be going on a eight hour cruise out to the Mears Glacier and hopefully we're gonna see tons of wildlife. Fingers crossed. All right, let's go. 
And welcome aboard the Valdez Spirit. Uh, my name is Alan, I'll be your captain today. Now we are headed to Unaquic Inlet today, a place called Mears Glacier is at the head of Unaquic Inlet. That's our ultimate destination. The crew should have passed out a wildlife guide. Real loose idea of what Prince William Sound looks like. We're starting in the northeastern quadrant of Prince William Sound. Uh, we have over a thousand miles of coastline here in the Sound. So that's more coastline than California, Oregon, and Washington put together. So we're about an hour into the cruise and we have already seen a couple of bald eagles, seals, a ton of sea lions, and the tallest waterfall in the Prince William Sound. If you look pretty much in any direction, you're gonna see a lot of ice. And this is all from Columbia Glacier, but it's over 20 miles from where we are right here. And this ice breaks off of Columbia Glacier in uh, sometimes just massive pieces and then floats out this way. We just saw the fluke of a humpback whale out ahead of us. It really could kind of pop up uh, anywhere. We're just gonna maybe sit here and, and see if we can get a view of this animal. Humpback whales are the fifth largest of the great whales. Uh, they average around 45 feet for females and about 40 feet for males. Oh. Oh. There are dozens of stellar sea lions over here on the rock, and you guys can't hear it over the engine noise, but they're just like roaring and they're so loud. And there's a bunch of puppets too that are watching fly into the rocks. But some real basic facts about Mears Glacier. It's about 13 miles long. It goes up into the 10,000 foot range of the Chugach Mountains. And so I'm just gonna get up here to about a quarter mile and then we'll turn the boat sideways and we'll just kind of sit and see what we can see. Mears is advancing. It moves up to 10 meters a day. So up to 30 feet a day. The way you can tell, if you look to the extreme right or left of the glacier at the face, you'll see where it's kind of mowed down some trees and taken over some vegetation. Whereas a receding glacier, you would see just barren rock. So we're right at the base of the glacier. We're only about a quarter of a mile away and you can hear it cracking. You gotta keep your eyes peeled because if you hear it, it's already happened. It's five dollars to touch. Five dollars to touch? Okay. Pretend to lick. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That was an incredible experience. It was top notch. One of the best tours I think we have ever taken. And it's a long day, but it is so worth it to go all the way out to Mears Glacier. That is the largest and most breathtakingly beautiful glacier I've ever seen. And it's an excellent, excellent tour if you're trying to get an overview of Valdez as a whole, because they talk about so many different topics, uh, everything from, well, obviously the Exxon Valdez, but then also just the topography, getting you uh, a lay of the land. And the wildlife. I mean, we saw a humpback whale. Can you believe it? Like, I can't. tail flipping like that was just so incredible. It's time to say goodbye to Valdez and head on to our next adventure. On our next episode, are we crazy enough to take our home on wheels down a 55 mile dirt road that isn't for the faint of heart? Uh, as Samuel L. Jackson once said in Jurassic Park, hold on to your butts. <laughs> And what kind of town will we find there? Plus, what is it like to hike on top of a glacier? We'll answer all these questions and more in the next episode of The New States Go North. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any of the fun. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.